Hello everyone. It is great to have you here for another installment of our lecture series, where we explore the intriguing concepts of rearrangements and fragmentations in organic synthesis. In our previous lecture, we introduced you to carbocations, discussing their stability and exploring rearrangements such as the wagner meerwein rearrangement. Today, we will delve deeper into this topic by unraveling other significant carbocation-associated rearrangements. We shall start with the pinacol rearrangement. When the 1,2-diol, pinacol, is treated with acid, a rearrangement takes place. Pinacol, the trivial name for the starting material gives its name to this class of rearrangements. Whenever you see a rearrangement, especially in acid, you should think about carbocation formation. Here, protonation of one of the hydroxyl groups allows it to leave as water, giving the carbocation. You now know that carbocations rearrange by alkyl shifts to get as stable as they can be. But this carbocation is already tertiary, and there is no ring strain. So why should it rearrange? Well, here we have another source of electrons to stabilize the carbocation, lone pairs on an oxygen atom. Oxygen is very good at stabilizing a positive charge on an adjacent atom, and somewhat less good at stabilizing a positive charge two atoms away. By rearranging, the first formed carbocation gets the positive charge into a position where the oxygen can stabilize it, and loss of a proton from oxygen then gives a stable ketone. A particularly valuable type of pinacol rearrangement forms spirocyclic ring systems. You may find this one harder to follow, although the mechanism is identical with that of the last example. Numbering the atoms should help you to see what has happened, atom 2 has migrated from atom 1 to atom 6. When drawing the mechanism, it does not matter which hydroxyl group you protonate or which adjacent carbon-carbon bond migrates, as they are all the same. One five-membered ring expands to a six-membered ring but the reason this reaction happens is the formation of a carbonyl group, as in all pinacol rearrangements. The intermediate cation in a pinacol rearrangement can equally well be formed from an epoxide, and treating epoxides with acid, including Lewis acids such as magnesium bromide, promotes the same type of reaction. Rearrangement of epoxides with magnesium salts means that opening epoxides with Grignard reagents can give surprising results. The reaction with alkyl lithium is quite straightforward as long as the alkyl lithium is free of Lewis acids. A clue to what has happened with the Grignard reagents comes from the fact that treating this epoxide with just magnesium bromide gives an aldehyde. With a Grignard reagent, rearrangement occurs faster than addition to the epoxide, and then the Grignard reagent adds to the formed aldehyde. With symmetrical diols and epoxides, it does not matter which hydroxyl group is protonated and leaves, nor which end the epoxide opens, nor which group migrates. However, when an unsymmetrical diol or epoxide rearranges, it is important which way the reaction goes. Usually, the reaction leaves behind the more stable cation. So, for example, this unsymmetrical diol gives the ring-expanded ketone shown here. This product is formed because the green hydroxyl group leaves more readily than the black, as the carbocation stabilized by two phenyl groups forms more readily than the carbocation stabilized by two alkyl groups. The migration step which follows has no choice, both alkyl groups on the black alcohol are the same. In this context, most unsymmetrical diols or epoxides give mixtures of products on rearrangement. The problem is that in unsymmetrical diols there is a choice of two leaving groups and two alternative rearrangement directions, and only for certain substitution patterns is the choice clear-cut. For some work on perfumery compounds, this seven-membered cyclic ketone was needed. A reasonable starting material to use is the diol shown because it can be made in two steps from the natural product isonopanoni. The reaction needed for the last stage is a pinacol rearrangement. The primary hydroxyl group needs persuading to leave as the ring expands. The problem is, of course, that the tertiary hydroxyl group is much more likely to leave since it leaves behind a more stable carbocation. 
The solution to this problem is to force the primary hydroxyl group to be the leaving group by making it into a tosylate. The primary hydroxyl group reacts more rapidly with tosyl chloride than the tertiary one because it is less hindered. A weak base is now all that is needed to make the compound rearrange in what is known as a semipinacol rearrangement. Semipinacol rearrangements are rearrangements in which a hydroxyl group provides the electrons to push the migrating group across. The pull comes from the departure of leaving groups other than water. The leaving group is tosylate in this example, but it can also be a halide or nitrogen. Since tosylation occurs at the less hindered hydroxyl group of a diol, not only can semi-pinacol rearrangements be more regioselective than pinacol rearrangements, but their regioselectivity may be in the opposite direction. From organic chemistry 1 you know how aromatic amines can be converted to diazonium salts by treatment with acidic sodium nitrite. Aryl diazonium salts are stable but alkyl diazonium salts are not, nitrogen gas is the best leaving group in substitution reactions, and, when it goes it leaves behind a carbocation. One of the further reactions this carbocation can undergo is rearrangement. If the starting amine is a 2-amino alcohol, the cation can be stabilized by a semi-pinacol rearrangement. When diazomethane adds to a ketone, the product undergoes a ring expansion by rearrangement of the same type of intermediate. The problem with reactions like this is that both the starting material and product are ketones, so they work cleanly only if the starting material is more reactive than the product. Cyclohexanone is more reactive as an electrophile than either cyclopentanone or cycloheptanone, so its ring expands cleanly to cycloheptanone. But expansion of cyclopentanone to cyclohexanone is messy and gives a mixture of products. The female sex hormone estrone is the metabolic product of another hormone, progesterone, itself made in the body from cholesterol. Estrone lacks one of progesterone's methyl groups, probably removed in the body as CO2 after oxidation. However, in 1946, Carl Gerasi showed that another derivative of cholesterol could be rearranged to the estrone analog 1-methylestradiol. Notice how the methyl group has this time migrated to an adjacent carbon atom. At the same time, the dinon has become a phenol. This type of rearrangement is known as a dinone phenol rearrangement, and we can consider it quite simply as a type of reverse pinacol rearrangement. In the key step of a dinone phenol rearrangement, a protonated carbonyl compound rearranges to a tertiary carbocation. While pinacol and semi-pinacol rearrangements are driven by the formation of a carbonyl group, dinone-phenol rearrangement is driven by formation of an aromatic system. You have seen rearrangements in which carbonyl groups form at the migration origin, the migrating group in the pinacol and semi-pinacol rearrangements is pushed by the oxygen's lone pair as it forms the new carbonyl group. You have also seen carbonyl groups being destroyed at the migration terminus, the migrating group in the dinone phenol rearrangement is pulled towards the protonated carbonyl group. The first rearrangement reaction ever to be described has both of these at once. In 1838, Justice von Liebig found that treating benzyl with hydroxide gave, after acid quench benzylic acid. The mechanism of this benzylic acid rearrangement starts with attack of hydroxide on one of the carbonyl groups. The tetrahedral intermediate can collapse in a reaction reminiscent of a semi-pinacol rearrangement. You may find it helpful to think of the benzylic acid rearrangement as a semi-pinacol rearrangement in which we have a breaking carbon-oxygen pi bond instead of a leaving group. The final rearrangement for this section is known as the Favorsky rearrangement. By looking at the general scheme of the Favorsky rearrangement you may get an impression that it is just a variant of the benzylic acid rearrangement. Well, this is what chemists thought until 1944, when it was found that two isomeric alpha-chloroketones gave the same product on treatment with methoxide. It was suggested that both reactions went through the same intermediate. That intermediate is a three-membered cyclic ketone, a cyclopropanone, the alkoxide acts not as a nucleophile but as a base, enolizing the ketone. Note that the base acts as a nucleophile in the benzylic acid rearrangement. 
The enolate can alkylate itself intramolecularly in a reaction that looks bizarre but that many chemists think is not unreasonable. The intermediate is the same cyclopropanone in each case. Cyclopropanones are very reactive towards nucleophiles, and the tetrahedral intermediate arising from the attack of methoxide springs open to give the ester product. The more stable carbanion leaves, although the carbanion is not actually formed as a free species, there must be considerable negative charge at the carbon atom as the three-membered ring opens. Here the benzyl group is the better leaving group. Favorsky rearrangement of cyclic 2-bromoketones leads to ring contraction, and this has become one of the most fruitful uses of the rearrangement in synthesis. Bromination of cyclohexanone and treatment with methoxide gives the methyl ester of cyclopentane carboxylic acid in good yield. Enolization occurs on the side of the ketone away from the bromine atom and the enolate cyclizes as before. As the cyclopropanone intermediate is symmetrical the product is the same whichever carbon-carbon bond breaks after nucleophilic attack by the methoxide ion. The overall consequence of the Favorsky rearrangement is that an alkyl group is transferred from one side of a carbonyl group to the other. This means that it can be used to build up heavily branched esters and carboxylic acids. Systems that are hard to make by alkylation because of the problems of hindered enolates and unreactive secondary alkyl halides. The Favorsky rearrangement is also a key step in the synthesis of the powerful obstetric painkiller pethidine. But try writing a mechanism for this last reaction and you will run into a problem, as there are no acidic protons so the ketone cannot be enolized. Yet the Favorsky rearrangement still works. Despite our warnings against confusing the mechanisms of the Favorsky and benzylic acid rearrangements, the Favorsky rearrangement may, in fact, follow a benzylic type rearrangement mechanism, if there are no acidic hydrogens available. Nevertheless, it is important to remember that in the Favorsky rearrangement, the migrating group ultimately replaces a chloride atom, unlike the benzylic acid rearrangement, where it adds to a carbonyl group. To recap, in this lecture, we delved into a variety of carbocation-associated rearrangements. Our journey began with the Pinacol rearrangement, demonstrating its usefulness in crafting spirocycles. Additionally, we explored semi-pinacol rearrangements involving epoxides and diazonium salts. We introduced the dianone phenol rearrangement as a reversed version of the pinacol rearrangement. Lastly, we discussed the benzylic acid rearrangement and Favorsky rearrangements, showcasing their applications in synthesizing highly branched esters and carboxylic acids. Our next lecture will delve into rearrangements featuring functional group migrations to heteroatoms. Thank you for your attention.